All right, let's get started. So uh, this is uh, IE 475, Simulating Stochastic Systems. I'm Ted Pavlik, I'm an associate professor here in Sky. Um, so a couple of little things here first. So remember to check the syllabus, like all, um, most of this that I'm gonna present to you is pretty up to date, but all the details are gonna be in the syllabus. A um, couple other uh, procedural things, uh, classroom sort of things. Um, so I mentioned, I sent sort of an email out that um, I kind of do this uh, sync. So for those of you, and there are several of you that have connected remotely, if you'd like to connect remotely, that's fine. Um, if you um, miss a class, uh, the, all the, the videos will be posted. Uh, so for asynchronous access, there um, will be some attendance type things, periodic exercises, but the way that'll work, and I'll go into this in a second, is you'll basically have 24 hours after the video is posted to be able to do whatever those tiny little things are. So um, so in general, it's, it's, I kind of run this as like a high flex course, hybrid flexible. So however you would like to attend, go ahead and do that. Um, you don't need to get kind of um, permission for me. So if you want to come into class, that's totally fine. If you'd rather attend remotely. If you want to mix it up, then that's fine too. So um, just, uh, just kind of get those sort of things out of the way. Um, if you get sick, so I'm wearing a mask right now. I kind of came down, it's not COVID, but I, the last three days came down with like a cold of all things. So, you know, um, but uh, so, you know, if, if you get sick and uh, you want to stay at home, I mean, that's great for, I think, most people here. Um, if, um, if, you know, but there's no reason to report your health status to me. So just take advantage of the flexibility, however works best for you. Um, other uh, things, so, you know, more information. I mean, all this is just kind of standard stuff. Just put it here for kind of the documentation. So again, check the syllabus for course related stuff. And let's get into those kind of like, um, you know, the stuff that's really about this course. Um, so the biggest thing is I put a great deal of info on Canvas. And so I'll, um, I'll step through these examples here through the slides, but also pull up Canvas here because there's a lot of information there and I've tried to organize it in a sort of a useful way, but you have to kind of know where to look for it. And so if I pull up the uh, Canvas page, And maybe I will see if I can just drag over here. All right, so I'll make this a little smaller. All right, so uh, Canvas page, you know, so it's kind of a little funny on this screen here, but the, the, the biggest place for about everything here. So there's a bunch of important stuff right here on the home page. So if you um, are in class now and you'd like to attend remotely some other time, you want to figure out what the connection stuff is, it's right here on the home page. Um, it's that, um, you know, it's right, the first thing mentioned there it gives you the, the, the um, Zoom link there. Um, but then most everything else, I mean, there's alternate ways to get to it, but most everything else, so announcements, I've sent out an announcement today, welcome people to class, but almost everything else will be under modules. And under the modules here, um, it's going to look like a lot at first. And so the first thing I'd recommend you do with modules is to hit this collapse all button in the top right just to bring this down here. And so you can kind of see the structure here is that each one of these, like the syllabus and other info is in this course information. There's some software that you'll use in this course, uh, primarily a, a package called Arena. There's also a package called NetLogo that we're gonna be using for some of the simulations and information about how to get those if you want them on your own computer or how to connect to university resources, in-person resources over in the brickyard, as well as remote resources. Um, that information can all be found under this long uh, course information. Um, I've also put um, a PDF of our kind of activity schedule. So if you're planning on going out of town or anything like that, want to know what you're going to be missing. And it's, um, it, you might not be able to tell by the cal Canvas calendar and sort of anything we would be doing, either lecture or labs, the schedule of it is going to be in that little PDF there. But otherwise, I put, you know, I try to wherever possible use due dates and availability windows. So your Canvas calendar should also be up to date for this class. Within the first week, sometimes things move around because when they copy a Canvas course from one semester to another, sometimes not all of the offsets work out correctly. Um, so I, I end up having to do some tuning. And I think I've done most of that so far, but there might be a couple of minor things. Those of you interested to do honors contracts, there's links in there from there as well. So pretty much again, all that course info is up in that module there. Um, after that, so there is a, um, I'll go into this, but <clears throat> there is a lecture textbook as well as a lab textbook. And, uh, but if, um, but I've actually made them available here. I'm probably not, you know, allowed to do this, but back when we were going through, you know, COVID and everything like that, it became uh, more 
difficult to get physical copies of these, so I end up just putting these online here. So if you'd like a physical copy of either of these books, that's great to get and it'll be helpful. But if you don't have access to one, these are available at the library as well. They have several copies you can put on closed reserve and um, you know make copies out of that and all that. But um, these PDFs should also uh, be available. One thing to note is in the lab textbook that I've said here, it uh, uses the software we'll be, we'll be learning, ARENA. Um, but <clears throat> uh, at the end of 2021, um, uh, uh, Rockwell Automation made what appeared to be a small update in version number, 16.0 to 16.1, but it was a major overhaul in the user interface. And so the images, the, the sort of screen captures out of the textbook and out of a lot of my slides won't immediately look like they match up. But um, after a little bit of translation, it's clear to find where things are. But initially, um, if you're opening Arena 16.1 on your computers, on the lab computers, it may not look like it's the same software program as this one, but that's just because they changed the user interface from 16.0 to 16.1. And I'll help you through that translation. That's where you can find the text. Um, for those of you who need to attend, <clears throat> who need to check things out afterwards, um, this classroom recordings, you can find all the recordings from this semester, as well as all the captured recordings from previous semesters. So you can feel free if, if whatever I was saying didn't quite make sense one Tuesday or Thursday, maybe the way I said it last year sounded better. So, um, so there's those resources that are available there. Um, and <clears throat> then after that, oh, also I mentioned Arena is probably a program you guys haven't had as much uh, uh, access to so far. So I've tried to collect a bunch of Arena resources. So again, if things aren't clicking, clicking in the lab, um, if you wanna check things out before you uh, bring questions to me or the TA, then you can ch uh, check out this Arena help resource here. Um, so the one kind of immediate uh, action item that I wanna highlight here is there's a unit zero, that is these two short online quizzes. You'll have to complete those. They're basically just syllabus quizzes. You have to complete those two, lecture zero and lab zero, in order to unlock the rest of the course. So um, go ahead and do those. Um, there's, I mean, I think they're technically due on Sunday, but I'm not gonna take off if you don't do them by Sunday because um, you, you need to complete them perfectly and you can keep retaking them until you get a perfect score um, and uh, in order to get access to all the rest of the modules. So that's kind of the immediate thing. And again, it's just a syllabus quiz. So it should be pretty quick to go through. Um, then the way things are organized here is I try to, in the first set of groups here in the modules, I've organized things kind of by type. So if you want to see like all the lecture slides um, all at once, there's a lectures here. And so all of my lectures, except for this one, are grouped in to this uh, lecture slide here. So if you're just looking for a lecture, you can find all of those. Those are all of the PDFs of all the lectures, as well as some supporting information when uh, it makes sense. Uh, the lab lectures as well. So there is a lab for this one, and I'll talk about that a little bit. All the lab lectures and labs are all bundled into one place. Um, all of the uh, readings that correspond to the, the lectures bundled in one place. All the homeworks bundled in one place. And um, final project information bundled in one place. And so that's kind of all the things organized by type. A lot of students like it that way, but some students rather it all be interdigitated together, kind of, um, you, know, you know, along with kind of what else, you know, how everything fits together. So then all the modules after that are organized by unit or topic. So like under unit A, you'll find the readings, the lectures, the homeworks, the labs, all sort of in the chronological order for that unit. So there are a lot of modules on this, but it's just me trying to provide you, again, more flexibility, more ways to get at the material. So again, just the many years I've taught this course, um, we've gone through different iterations across Blackboard and Canvas, and this is kind of what ended up being kind of converged on. So, um, so some students really like the top of the modules, some students really like the bottom of the modules, but uh, that's how it's all organized. So um, I encourage you to take a look through that. He says mainly just all of these uh, units here. And, um, and uh, then, yeah, so that's, that's what we'll go for that. So that's what I'm talking about with Canvas. So let me close that out and go back to the regulation material here. And this is just gonna step through the same stuff as reminders, modules, hit the collapse all, um, go through the different modules, roughly speaking, uh, course information's up top, groupings of things by type or next, and then all of the chronological units are after that. So that's how Canvas is set up. That's where you can find things. All right, so um, the other little things here. So yeah, two 
75 minute lectures Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, the labs are on Wednesdays, but as uh, we'll see, there's plenty of ways for you to complete the lab material actually ahead of time. So um, the lab re is really meant, and I'll get into this in detail here, but the lab and the lab TA are really meant to be open lab resources to help you for that particular week's exercise. But for some of you, you may not have to wait for that. And so I don't wanna force you to go to lab to do an experience you can do on your own. So I've made all the labs available ahead of time. So if you'd like, you can review them all ahead of time. Um, if you end up finding you have trouble on a certain thing, you can come into lab during that particular lab time and get help with the TA. Yeah. Uh, it, you, I would recommend showing up when it starts um, if you want help from the TA, because if the TA comes and like nobody's there for 15 minutes, the TA, I, I, so, you know, he can leave. Because I don't want to, like, I think lab formally is what, like three hours or something like that. So, um, so rather than, I mean, the TA might end up just using that as kind of a, uh, an office hours for anyway too, but, but I would say to be sure to get access to the TA, if you want to access the TA, show up in the first 15 minutes or half hour. After that, I can't guarantee that he'd be there because if nobody shows up, I just want him to hang out there for three hours. But I think you'll find that a lot of the labs, um, you, uh, you know, you can make use of office hours, remote office hours with me and with the TA, with emails and things like that. And I think you'll find that until we get to the labs sort of towards the end of the semester, um, they'd be, they're gonna be sort of relatively straightforward. Um, if you do need to email me, um, I get a lot of junk, uh, just to sort of uh, nature of being a professor, a lot of you know people wanting to sell me things in the lab and all that sort of stuff. If you prefix your subjects with IE 475, that will be sure to flag them so that I see them and they don't get, they won't get pushed off into spam and they get tagged in a way that make them more obvious to you. So I can hopefully get back to you, you know, quick, more quickly. So please, please do that. And if you have to send lab related emails, uh, make sure to include the TA in those emails, unless it's like a weird problem with the TA, because generally like if it's a lab grading question, the lab TA will be grading the labs. So before I can kind of make a ruling, um, I'll have to confer with the lab TA anyway. So it streamlines things if you just send to the lab TA and carbon copy me or send to both of us, uh, but include the TA because I'm going to end up having to forward the TA anyway. And, uh, and by the way, the TA, I, I think I know the name of the TA, but they've um, hiring this semester. They've been waiting to fill all the other uh, sections before they send out all the offers. So although I'm pretty sure who the TA is going to be, I don't have that from HR, probably not until tomorrow. That's the reason I'm not saying the TA's name, but that'll be posted on campus. And you won't need the TA um, probably until next week anyway. All right, so what is this course? Well, so our goal here is to learn how to build simulations. So um, a, a kind of a term that's coming into real popularity now is digital twins, um, which is sort of just a repackaging of of simulation, of high fidelity simulation. And so what we're gonna learn in this course is how to build computer-based models for real world systems. And we are going to use frameworks that um, involve stochastic systems. Now, um, a lot of these terms aren't gonna make a lot of sense right now. Maybe they kind of do, or they're just a little fuzzy, uh, but that's part of the goal of the course is to fill in those blanks. And so we're gonna start defining these terms starting next week. But just sort of like formally, that's what we're going to be doing here. And so there's, um, you're going to basically learn how to look at industrial systems and recognize that whereas some systems are best modeled by a linear program out there to sort of optimize for something, other systems are sort of difficult to formulate in a mathematical structure. And so it becomes easier to model the interactions of individual components of that system put them all together into a computer framework and then let the computer framework do the hard part of putting all of those things together so that you can get uh, data out of that. Now, because um, we're not, it's not mathematical based, like the outputs are effectively gonna be empirical. In fact, we're gonna sort of run um, simulations of real systems um, in, so it's as if the real system is now living inside the computer. So because of that, we're going to need to use statistical tools um, in order to analyze our simulation model. So just like if you were on an internship or a job out there and you made a change to a, an assembly line, um, in order to evaluate that change, you might have to run an experiment where you maybe analyze a day's worth of data, a year's worth of data or so on. 
the same sort of thing is going to happen here. Rather than solving for x and seeing if x is greater than 5, as you might do in a more mathematical based uh, operation here, we'll actually have to simulate these systems and run the same sort of stats that we would expect to run in the real world. So for those of you who haven't had a chance to play with, um, you know, if things like t-tests and ANOVAs and so on are, are things that seem kind of abstract, this will be an opportunity for us to actually use them for something real. So that's one of the things that we do here. So, um, so hopefully when you come out of this class, you'll be able to you know, look at a system, know if it's appropriate for simulation, build a, a model of it in a language like Arena. This, isn't a cla this class uses Arena, but it's not a class on Arena. So the things you'll learn in Arena will be portable to a wide range of other simulation tools. Um, figure out how to gather data from the uh, real world. So you'll have a final project that I'll talk about where you'll actually go out and gather data from a real system you're interested in. Now, you know, it may not be an industrial system, it might be a restaurant, it might be a coffee shop, it might be a bank. But the idea here is that we're gonna learn how and what data to take so that we can then build a model of that system that produces outputs that are the right type of random. So every time we run our systems on the computer, we're gonna get different outputs, just like in the real world but we want the variance that comes out of our computer models to match the variance that comes out of the real world systems so that our computer models become a surrogate for the real world systems. And we'll figure out how to do that. Um, and then how do we finally then communicate that um, via written reports? So actually one of the nice things about simulation, and we'll see this I think on Tuesday, um, is that not only do your sims generate data, they also generate visualizations. And so sometimes it's actually easier to communicate an idea via sim than it is via you know, a, a mathematical proof. And so that's one of the things we're gonna be talking about. So in order to do that, we basically divided this into two big sections here. So this first section is sort of an introduction to modeling. So um, introduction to kind of modeling and SIM at first, and then how to use probabilistic models to interact with computer simulations. And then, um, and so that kind of is the first half before the midterm. And then the second half here, is sort of applications here. Now that we know how to build these models, how do we make them more complex? And how do we make them run faster? How do we make them more reliable? How do we build confidence in our models? That's kind of this uh, second half here. So it's kind of the way things are sort of split up. And so there'll be a midterm and a final exam. These are so-called two-stage exams, which I'll explain here in just a second. The lab experiences are also split up to support that idea. So the first couple of labs are basic modeling labs. So you'll get exposure to different types of modeling, not only to the discrete event system simulation modeling that most of this class is about, but also agent-based modeling, um, also Monte Carlo methods. So these are things that you'll get some exposure to in the early labs. And then the later labs are going to be um, getting you more and more familiar with this arena language that most of you will use in your final project. That is a real language that is written by uh, Rockwell Automation that real uh, simulation engineers use out there. So this is um, not just sort of an academic tool. It's, this is a, a tool that is a marketable skill. And uh, then you'll do your final projects. And so we've got some labs to help support that. Um, and then towards the end of the semester, um, some of those lab times are open so that you have time to meet with us and meet with each other um, during normal scheduled class time. So, um, so there won't be a lot of lab deliverables in the bottom third, maybe quarter, fifth of the class. All right, so um, I mentioned there are these two books, but see Canvas for access options. So if you want a hard copy, that's great. Um, but uh, so this lecture is based on this Jerry Banks book, Banks et al. Um, it's a generic simulation book. It's, so he has a couple of examples that he references different simulation languages. Some of the examples come straight out of Excel even, uh, but it's not focused on one particular language, whereas the lab book really is focused on how do you do discrete event system simulation with Arena. And again, both of those I've provided some access options in case you don't wanna shell out the cash for them. Um, so, uh, and then because this is the lecture textbook on Canvas, next to every lecture, you'll find the chapter that corresponds to that lecture. And so uh, the hope is that you've at least skimmed that chapter before you come to lecture so that your mind is already kind of moving in that direction. So, um, so look for those brackets after the lectures to figure out how they tie into the book 
and try to prepare before the lectures by skimming through those ahead of time. And I've provided some extrinsic motivation for doing that as well, which I'll talk about here in a second. All right, so software, I mentioned Arena. We'll be using a lot of Arena. There's a, you can download Arena if you have a Windows machine or a Windows virtual machine. Um, if you don't want to do it on your, your own, um, it is also available in uh, Brickyard 214. Um, if you want to access it from remote, um, there is the remote access labs. This first link is kind of the older way we've done remote access. And I think that still works, at least for this semester. But now they're trying out a cloud classroom, uh, the second link down here. And if on the, the Canvas site, you'll see a link on the left that says a Porto virtual desktop. And that's what this thing is over here. And so when you go to that thing, you'll be able to click on a Windows desktop and right inside your browser, be able to access a Windows virtual server that has Arena loaded on it. There's a little folder on the desktop that says Arena. Um, and it should also have NetLogo as well. Um, NetLogo is a free program and it's multi-platform. So anybody can download it, anybody can run it. Um, so that's how you can get access to Arena. Um, like I said, there's some other software packages like NetLogo. We will do some data analysis. And so it's good to have some familiarity and some access to a spreadsheet program. Nothing too complicated. Doesn't have to be Excel, it could be Google Sheets. Um, and then um, I'm not gonna require anything, but um, in principle, some of the more advanced statistical tests that will come up towards the end of the uh, semester, if you wanna make use of those and say your final projects, it will be easier to implement them in sort of more special purpose stats software. Uh, like we have here with like uh, with R, MATLAB, and so on. So I'm not requiring those or anything, but just saying there's an opportunity to use them. Um, and then, yeah, I mentioned NetLogo. All right, the way uh, the grade is, is there any questions so far? So basically, I, I know most of the questions are usually about this stuff, which is the reason why I haven't asked for questions so far. Um, I've just kind of been, you know, doing the fire hose of policy, but but the next couple of slides are going to be about how things are graded and so on and so forth. But are there any questions about the more abstract stuff that I've just gone over before we get into this stuff? Questions online? Okay, good. All right, so this is how I've divided up the grade. So I mentioned there's um, this sort of a attendance thing here that's like five percent of the grade, but I think of the like. 30, um, I drop a bunch of these. And so it's like, you can look at the drop policy on Canvas, but I think I drop the lowest five of these. And so, um, and we'll, we'll see how we take attendance is, is pretty lightweight as well. But so if you don't happen to hit one of these attendance exercises, it's not gonna hurt you. Um, the whole batch of them is 5% of the grade and it drops the lowest five anyway. Um, and uh, you don't have to, if you wanna skip a class or whatever, you don't have to tell me or whatever, it just automatically happens. Um, then I've got these um, interactive Canvas activities, which um, is one of the, that kind of extrinsic motivation to try to do uh, the reading. And so I'm just going to try to focus. Sorry, I'm back on this PowerPoint here. So with, um, and so, the, well, I think I'm, I might step through, well, I'll just do it here. So on Canvas, there will be some online assessments that correspond to the lecture material. So there's certain lectures like, you know, there might be a chapter associated with lecture A2 or a chapter associated with lecture B3. And these um, are meant to, um, th these are due ahead of time to sort of guide you through how you should be skimming that chapter material. And again, see the syllabus for the dropping policy because several of these are dropped too. In fact, I think I drop a huge chunk of these, like two thirds of them or something like that. Um, so really it's not meant to be a weekly burden on you. It's meant to be just sort of some encouragement to keep up with the material. But again, the drop policy is pretty healthy on these, much healthier than this one here. So that um, it's meant to be, if you don't, if you feel like things are fine, you're not gonna have to take those. But if you're feeling like you're starting to kind of get behind, it's that extra encouragement. So I think of the, um, I forget how many I have, like of the 15 of them, you only have to do like five over the semester. So. It's, it's meant to be something that you don't have to keep completely up with every single week. The homework assignments, um, there is uh, no drop policy there because there's only like five of them. Uh, but uh, the, um, but the, the due dates that I've posted, I give you like four days after that you can turn them in without any penalty. And, um, and then a solution set goes up and so you can't turn them in after that. And so these are mainly based out of the book. Uh, again, they're just supposed to be ways to help you keep up with the work. 
we'll have this uh, midterm and final exam, and I will comment more on those in a couple of slides, a final project that is a group project that's just traditional for a simulation class, and then these lab assignments with these lab reports. Um, and again, there's a drop policy there. So see Canvas for the, the precise numbers there. All right, so um, I mentioned lecture attendance. So uh, we're doing this at ASU Sync and asynchronously. So basically what's going to happen is that in every lecture, except for this one, um, you automatically get credit for this one when you do those online things, those lecture zero quizzes. Um, what I'm going to do is periodically throughout the lecture, I'm going to show you a slide that looks like this one. So this is a fake slide um, because it's, I mean, it's, you can could, you could submit it, but you're not getting a credit for anything here. And so like, I'll have gone over some topic, we'll have had some discussion about it, I'll pop up this thing, and then on your cell phone or on a computer, um, you'll pop up, it'll pop up a Google form that'll have 10 opportunities to answer, and you just leave that form up for the whole class. You don't submit it until the end of class. And so at some point, I might ask you, like, all right, for the first question, um, you know, how many days uh, do you get to to uh, uh, get a grade correction or something like that. And then you would fill in seven, you know? And so, um, and I don't grade these for correctness. I grade them for comprehension. So if I ask that question and then you put in black bear or something like that, then I'd say, well, you're probably not gonna get uh, attendance credit for that day. And so you just do this within 24 hours of when I publish the video on Canvas and you'll get the attendance credit. So um, I'll do maybe two or three of those each lecture and that's how we get the attendance credit. So pretty lightweight. Um, <clears throat> the final project, so like I said, this is a group based project, nominally three or four uh, individuals per group. Um, the way this will work is there's a couple of different assignments peppered throughout the semester. This mainly kicks in after the midterm, so you don't actually have to form your groups until right after the midterm. And, uh, and the idea here is you're going to form your group, you'll get some points for that. You're going to submit like a two pager, sort of telling me uh, what system you want to study and what are the kind of critical variables in it <clears throat> and then i'm going to leave you alone and then in the last week of class and traditionally in the middle of the last week of class you're going to upload a video presentation so instead of presenting in front of class we're all going to upload videos to canvas as well as a four-page report and then between the time you upload it, which is going to be the middle of the week, Wednesday, and Saturday, which is like the last kind of day of class or day of the semester, then uh, you'll peer review one other group's report. So you'll upload your video and then you'll have to watch one other group's video, or you'll upload your report and you have to read one other group's report. So then everyone will end up getting about three to four people watching their video and reading their report and giving peer reviews. And those <clears throat> you doing the peer reviews just doing them and leaving constructive comments will give you enough to score some of your points through your own final project and then for the actual scores for the project for a group presentation i will go through each one of those but then part of my score will be an aggregation of the scores from your peers um so so that's kind of the way that we do that so any questions about this final project setup and we'll talk more about it when it gets relevant. Again, it's not really going to be relevant until after the midterm, sort of after the middle of the semester. Okay. I'm sure there's nothing online. Okay. All right. Then the exams. So the, the weird thing, at least it seems to be weird in engineering, uh, there's this new thing called a two-stage exam. It's not that new. But, um, but what I do is for both the midterm and the final exam, I give you the same test twice. So... What's going to happen is let's say the final exam, let's say the midterm stage one, I forget what day it come, happens on in this uh, semester. Let's say it happens on a Tuesday. So um, you'll get this timed exam for stage one. You'll take it individually with a couple of sheets of uh, uh, crib sheets and you'll do that and then you'll submit it and that'll be an individual score. You will not get a solution set. You will not know your score, but then on Thursday, they'll be the exact same exam, but you can have access to all your notes and everybody in the class. So then the group can take the, the second class um, and then, um, and then you, you'll score something on that. Your score will be 80% your stage one score plus 20% your stage two score. So your overall score for the midterm is a fraction of how you did individually without help and a fraction of how you did after everyone took the, the, the exam and then came back together. And then only after all the stage twos are turned in, 
that you'll actually start to see your scores in the solution sets. And I do the same thing for the final exam and for the midterm. And because um, I want to make sure that everybody has, again, flexible access to the course, then uh, we're going to use Canvas to administer these. Uh, so we are going to use a lecture. So if you want, you can come like here on that Tuesday of stage one and that Thursday of stage two and bring your computers. And I will be in here and I'm happy to answer proctoring like questions. Or you can just take it um, at home. And I will give you a, a usually a longer window than just a day. So if even though the official exam might be on a Tuesday, I might give everybody Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to do it. But whenever you start stage one, you only get, I'll probably round up to 90 minutes to deal with technical issues. Uh, but then stage two, you'll get the entire period. So if stage two is on a Thursday, I might give you Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and you can just submit it. You can keep editing your answers and you don't actually have to submit it till like midnight on Friday. So that's the way that's set up for both the midterm and the final exam. Two stage exam, um, I generally gotten positive feedback on it. It might sound weird here, but, um, but generally, I think students end up liking it after. So any questions about that, the two-stage? Has anyone here ever taken a two-stage exam? I didn't. Oh, yeah? Really? In high school? Okay. So it started to bubble up into uh, some college classes, but not quite in engineering yet. I have a joint appointment, so see it in different schools. Um, like I said, labs can be completed ahead of time. Uh, it's just a lab report that's basically submitted the Sunday after that lab is slotted, but all the labs are available ahead of time. Um, assignment naming conventions. So you'll see that I have homework, like homework B1. Well, that homework is you're supposed to have the knowledge to do homework B1 after lecture B1. So that's the way that is assigned. But ICA, the Canvas Activities A2, that is supposed to be um, the, you're supposed to be able to complete that ICA before that lecture. So the homeworks, sort of, you can imagine that the letter and number that comes after the homework is when the homework is assigned. And the letter and number that comes after the ICA is, uh, is sort of like when the ICA is due. So that's the kind of difference in those, those two things there. Okay, um, late policies. So basically, uh, it's pretty flexible. I put due dates that'll be on Canvas. I also, whenever possible, put availability windows. And, as, and the availability, I usually give you, let's say something, a lab report is due Sunday night. I usually put an availability window until Monday at 10 a.m. And even though it's technically due Sunday night, that's my like, aspirational goal for you is to get it in Sunday night. Um, if you turn it in before the availability window. So basically if Canvas lets you turn it in, you're not gonna get a late penalty. Canvas may mark it late because it's after the Canvas's due date, but I'm not gonna assess a penalty for that. So, um, so there are some things like homeworks that I provide you because there are no drops on homeworks. I really wanna make sure everyone gets the homeworks in. So <clears throat> there'll be a homework due date, but the availability window for the homeworks is usually at least four days after that. So again, you should try to get it in by the due date, but if you forget about it or whatever, then there's more of a buffer on homeworks because the instant the availability on homeworks uh, shuts down, the solution set goes up. And once the solution set is out, I can't accept any more uh, submissions. So the way that sort of works out, um, similar with final project assignments, because of the peer review process, they really have to come in when I say they're due. So there's no grace period on the final project, but you'll have been working on that for a long period of time anyway. All right, so any questions about that? The rest is, I think, pretty normal stuff that I won't you know, let you read in the syllabus. Questions online. All right, grade corrections. I kind of mentioned this uh, briefly when I talked about that attendance policy. If you get a return grade back, um, try to check, uh, check on it. And if you have, if you want to contend the grade and say like, maybe I missed something or the TA missed something, we'll give you a week for that. Um, just so we don't get a whole bunch of people at the end of the semester. So, um, so we have a week after the score gets to you. So you might turn it in, maybe it takes two weeks to grade, and then you get the score back and you got a week after that. After that week, I can't um, make those corrections because I just can't set up the possibility of 60 of you wanting me to check a bunch of things when I'm trying to get your final exam all, all sorted out. Um, and then also, I have to, sadly, I have to mention this, but um, but it's, it's actually ASU's formal policy that if you request a grade change for reasons other than 
something to do with the, the merits of the course. So if you say like, I really need this grade to maintain my visa status or whatever, ASU considers that academic misconduct and I am uh, obligated to report it. So, um, so don't, um, if you are having trouble, like, you know, reaching a particular grade boundary, if, the, if, if, you, if your grade change request isn't about a mistake that was made in the grading, like the merits of your work how to do in the court, then I, I can't do anything for you. And in fact, I have to report it if you ask me to increase your grade for other reasons. Um, Copyrighted course stuff, don't sell your notes, even though they're your notes. ASU considers that active is misconduct if you post your notes. Um, I post a lot of material on Canvas for you already. I have like old final exams are already on Canvas for you to take a look at, old midterms on Canvas for you to take a look at. Don't um, post any of that stuff. Don't post any new stuff. Um, just keep keep it in the class. And so, um, so that it's, you, the, it's a, you, know, you shouldn't have to distribute anything from this class to anything outside of this class. And unapproved collaboration. So there are some assignments that are group assignments, but if an assignment has individual on it, then that means that you have to submit your own work. So um, when you're submitting the work, uh, don't uh, submit exactly the same words as your partner. Of course, you might say like, oh, I forget the difference between an event and an activity or something like that. These are two terms we use in discrete event system simulation. And you might talk about that with your neighbors and that's totally reasonable. But if you're coming up with examples of events and activities on a, let's, let's say the first lab, uh, make sure that you use a different set of events than the neighbor that you were trying to, you know, to figure out these things. And so I know you're going to work together, but I really wanna make sure that after you work together, everyone's understanding is reflected in what you submit. Okay, and then this is just, I think, me um, talking about these in-class So, Any questions about any of the policy stuff? Questions online? All right. Okay, so I mentioned in-class. There's a couple of different things I do. Um, one of them is the attendance exercise. The other thing I do is this thing. So um, this is a sample slide here where if you go to this URL or you scan this QR code, um, then you can submit an anonymous question. And I'm not watching these right now, but normally I'll have those up and running so that if you don't wanna raise your hand or if you're, or you don't wanna volunteer, um, you know, even if you're online from remote, you don't wanna type it into the Zoom chat because you don't wanna have your name associated with it. If you wanna send me an anonymous question, then there's a queue of them here. And if I don't catch it during class, then I will do my best to post an answer on Canvas afterwards. So that's the way you do it. Of course, you can always raise your hand. You can always raise a question in the chat. Um, you can you know, unmute if you're online. All of those things are fine too. But that's what this slide is all about. Um, these aren't attendance questions. They look like the attendance slides, but it's just been an opportunity. Even if you're in the class, if you got your laptops out, if you got your cell phones out, totally happy with you using them as long as you're not distracting the rest of the class and you can feel free to take advantage of that. And then I also mentioned the attendance exercises, the same thing. No attendance we have to worry about for today, but for the rest of the lectures, if you see one of these, then that just means keep adding to it and don't submit it until the end of class. If you're in class and you don't have the opportunity to go here, um, you can submit a paper-based version of it. Um, and you just basically have to put your ASU right on it and your responses on, on the card and you can hand that in. And so, um, but of course it's a lot easier. You can use the online interface. Okay, um, so check the syllabus, a lot of details there. Remember, there's kind of these two syllabus quizzes. One's kind of lab zero and the other one's lecture zero. You've got to do those before it unleashes the rest of the class. Um, where to go next? Like I said, complete those unit zero activity, uh, activities. You've got to get a perfect score on them. You can take them as many times as you need to do that. Start reading chapter one. Um, look for the first ICA assignment for unit A, which is, I think, before Thursday's lecture. Um, so That'll again, that'll just be a couple of questions help guiding you through chapter one. Um, and uh, then there's also lab one coming up. And so that's Wednesday. And, um, and so that will be due, I think, the Sunday after that. But you can, whereas the homeworks I haven't released yet because I still am massaging them for this semester, but I'm going to try to release them as many of them as I can as soon as possible. All the labs are already out there. All the ICAs are already out there. So you can feel free to start working on things as you wish. So with that, yeah, are there any questions? That's all I've got for you today. Pretty clear.
Okay, well, with that, um, I hope you all have a great start of your semester and a good weekend, and we'll see you Tuesday. Are there any other questions from online? If not, I will go ahead and stop the recording and maybe need to close the room. Okay. Have a good weekend online.